In today's show, I'm going to talk about Power Apps design ideas and the is empty function. So I set out to make you a video about doing validation stuff and in the process I made this beautiful gallery and all the fun little things that go with it. So I thought instead of focusing on the validation side, we just focus on making a kind of nice little design here and kind of give you guys some little tips, little ideas. So we're going to do some flyouts and different types of sorting and error messages just to make a nice app. But before we do any of that, first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys. In today's show, we're going to tell some Power Apps design ideas. And mostly focused around the gallery, but really just kind of working on making a really nice screen for your users to have the ability to see data, search the data, sort the data, and just a good design experience, some error messages if they search for things that aren't found, just a bunch of little things. And one of the functions we're going to use along the way is we're going to use the is empty function, which is kind of what started me down this road, but my intention was to make a video about is empty. But I got kind of sidetracked and I decided that what I came up with was better than my original idea. So I pivoted. Who knew? All right. Who cares, right? Blah, blah, blah. Show me the app. Fair enough. Let's switch over to my desktop and see the app. Over here on my desktop, you can see I've got the app and running. And so you, you see things like I added a background image in the background to kind of give the screen some texture, right? I found a lot of people want to do things like that. They're enjoying this idea of just kind of some type of nondescript image, but just something that gives it the app a little texture. So we threw one of those in there. We added the ability to sort our data. So we're like, hey, I want to sort on department. And so I can click on the little thing, which you've probably done before. We'll talk about how that works. But I also went an extra step and said, oh, what if you click on the word department? Why not make that work? Cool. So then same with all these different fields. And then the one that I had the most fun with <laughs> Over here, you can see my little search icon. If you click on this, watch my thing. Whoop! Ah, oh, fancy. And if I type in Shane, there I am. Yay! But if I type in Shane E, like my mommy used to call me, look at that. No records found. Please retry your search. So pretty cool. If we can either say try again and watch this, it put my cursor back up here. Oh! And we can, of course, just X out of here at any point. So we also, I went ahead and did these little Unicode uh, faces because it turns out that. It's not super obvious to everyone how you do that, so I'll make sure you understand how that works. There's so many little fun things in here. Um, so yeah, let's just kind of tear this thing apart. Remember, if you're like, oh wow, I want this app. Well, I've made this app completely self-contained, so then that way you could just download it. So if you're a subscriber over at training.powerapps911.com to the curated library, then you have access to just download this fully functional app. Because one of the things I did was, if we look for view data sources, I did an import from Excel to pull the data in. So I just have static data in the app, but you guys could replace this with your SharePoint, your SQL, your CDS, whatever data source you have. But when I package it up this way, when I share the zip file out, then you get all the data as well. So you can play with it. All right. So it's a one screen app. Clearly we could make it do more things, but that wasn't the purpose. Really it was about the design. So let's start a new screen and let's recreate we'll recreate some of these concepts and some of the other ones. I'll just kind of show you what I did. But so I'm going to say insert a new screen. And so the first thing I wanted to do was I wanted that header bar at the top. And if you haven't watched the video before, I have made a component with that, right? And it's in my component library. So I just said, hey, uh, go get more components. And so in this shows all the different component libraries. And I have one called real library with the stuff I actually use. And so in there was my header. And so now that I've added that, which you're not going to see because it's already added, right? But when I added it over here in our library components, there's my header. And so then I pulled that over and look at that. I get all that design. And I've made that really functional, right? I'll put a link to the video, I don't know, somewhere up there. So if you guys wanted to see the one about making that component, but it's not the purpose of here, but that was the first piece. So the next, what I had to do was I wanted to set that background, give it a little bit of texture. So Actually, if you just click on your screen over here, you have the ability to add a background image. And so I uploaded a, uh, this one called Gears, put it on there, I'm like, oh, that's not bad. And then I just changed it to fill and it took up the whole screen. Now, you can see that that is a pretty vibrant image. I mean, it's for, for gray, right? It's as vibrant as gray can be. So if you're like, you know, I don't like my image, then you could go into an image editing tool and soften it. Or, you know, one of the other ideas I didn't do in the my app, but I thought about, I forgot, is you could also just grab like a rectangle. I take this. And so then if you change it 
and you use kind of like we do with our pop-ups. You can just put this gray film over the top of it, but maybe we just won't do it as intensely. So we'll say like 169, 169, and then 0.5. And see, so that just put that gray rectangle over top of it, and it just softened the image. And then remember, the 169, 169, 169, that gets the color. That's what produced the gray. This 0.5 is the transparency. So if you wanted it darker, 0.75. If you wanted to just, just a touch lighter, we could do like a 0.2. And then it's just barely got a little bit over it. So it kind of gives you a nice way to control and get those in there. So if you're not an image editor, just put a little, little film over the top of it. Look at that. So now we've got a nicer looking screen with literally no work. And remember, I am famous for making really ugly apps. So the fact that I made this was pretty shocking. I know. So the next thing I want to do is I threw a gallery on here. And so with your gallery, you know, we'll just kind of pull this. I will change it to be a title, subtitle, and body. I think it's what I did. Something like this. And then um, I'm going to set the, oh, I'm going to click on the gallery. I'm going to set the data source to that uh, employee table data. So then that way it has something to show. And so then for the fields, I'm like, hey, I want you to show my fields. Why are you being rude? Oh, because all my other stuff's on top of it. Let's pull the gallery to the front. Reorder, bring to front. There we go. And so with the gallery then, what I started to do was I'm like, all right, well, that first thing, if you notice over here, my gallery kind of has this transparency to it. It was actually the same concept. So I went to the gallery and I said, hey, gallery, your fill, um, actually, we'll go to the template fill. Your template fill, instead of being clear, which is what that is, I did 255, 255, 250, oh, 255. Oh my goodness, typing is hard, people. And then I did a one, and so that is white, okay? I'm like, all right. And then I just got in here, and I just started playing with the transparency level of it. That's a little two, so kind of go back a little bit more. How about we go to 0. 0.5? And basically, over there, I kind of just played with it until I got the right amount of white for the screen image I had, because it's not a set number, right? Over here, I had a more vibrant image, I didn't do that gray overlay over it. So I was able to use a much heavier white, right? I think the template fill here, oh, I didn't do, I did gallery fill, not template fill. So I did 255, 255.9, but if we bring that over to here, and if I put that in, then because my other one is so bored out, then it doesn't have anything leaked through. So you just had to kind of mess with it a little bit until I got the right, the right feeling okay so once again not a not a set way you do it i'm just giving you the idea so you can play until you find it that's still just too much 0.5 okay and so then over here as well you notice that my gallery um was wide i didn't do anything fancy right people kind of get scared of this i just grabbed these columns i'm gonna delete this icon and i just made them smaller and then I just move them to kind of sit beside each other. There, there's no specialty to what I did there, right? I just kind of rearranged, that's probably way too big. I just kind of start dragging these around and then I could pull this up. And so then that starts to build that same design, right? That, and this one here um, is not cooperating, so we'll pull them down, there we go. And so I just kind of drug these pieces around until I got them to look the way I wanted. Um, now, over here as well, if we change this from title to first name, so that was how I did that, right? And then I had last name, so I did a little, I did my most famous formula. I don't know how many times in my life I have typed this formula, but it's a lot. This and the currency formula. Oh. And so then notice over here, though, I then had this idea of the, the, the smiley face or the uhs. So what that's really tied to is in my data set, there is a field called um good at their job and so good at their job is a boolean field it's a true false which was perfect for me so what i did was i said all right so i'm going to put your name your this do this and then i said and if this item dot good at their job so if you're good at your job then i want to put in a smiley face well so it's a string and so then i need a space and so then if you don't know this, right, one of the things you can do in Windows is you can hold down the Windows key and hit Windows um, dot or period. 
and you get this fun little board. And so then now you can you know start to type in things like shrug, and you can see what shows up for it, and it'll, it'll auto-suggest, or you can just use your mouse and scroll through all these and be like, oh, well, if they're good at their job, I want to, I don't know, what do I want to use? We use a monkey, <laughs> we use a dog face. There we go. Chewy will appreciate that. And so then we just close it out. And if they're not good at their job, then we'll do a quote and a thing, and then we'll hit the Windows period again. And then I'll type in cat, right? Because if dogs are good at their jobs, then cats are bad at their jobs. And so then we close out, and look at that. Now, automatically, we've got in our app all of the little uh, Unicode icons. And that's, that's it, right? I mean, there's other ways of going at it. There's other ways to solve, do this. But for me, I'm an emoji person, right? If you ever email with me, I like I, every business email I send ends up with an emoji. And I always feel like people probably think he's dumb. Eh, whatever, right? I like emojis in my emails. And so ever since I was able to do this window uh, button and then a dot, I've done a lot more of those. All right. So that is um, how I solve that side of it. All right, so then up here at the top, I'm like, all right, I want this header bar. So for my header bar, I kind of pull this down a little bit. And what I'm going to do, the first thing I did, and remember there's like 12 ways to build something like this, right? If I could pull this in here and then um, do something like this. So I kind of made my header bar. And I wanted it to be the same purple as the header. So one of the things that I've done that was not in the original header video was I've added for my header, there is now a property called header fill color. And so that is actually my Power Apps 911 purple. So what I do for this bar is I'm just gonna say, hey you, you know what color your fill is? Your fill is header underscore two dot header fill color. And so in that way I get my purple. I'm not saying in any way that's the best practice, but for me, Right? Remember, this is all about me, not you. It's about me. For me, a lot of times, I want a quick way to reference the color. I use it in all these different videos and stuff, so I pull it in that way. So that's one of the interesting ideas that I've not explored a lot, but at some point, I'd like to wrap my brain around is, you know, could I just make this standard company header kind of have a bunch of the different properties so then that way, when people use my company header, they could just pull that in. I don't know. I haven't, I haven't went down that rabbit hole, but there's an idea for you guys to think about. Because for me, it's super great now that I got my purple. And so then I'm like, all right, now I need a label. And we're not going to do all of them, right? But we're going to just do this one. I typed in name. And I just jumped over here and said, you know what? You're probably more like a 20 font and a bold. And then we will change your color to white. And so now I got name. And so then I would then just copy this label, control C, control V, pull it over here. And then this would be email okay so that was how I built out the header that we see now oh I also underlined them oops well slacker me there you go underline underline yay um, so then I wanted to do the um, the sorting and now you know what we'll do it in the order that I did things so I will do the sorting next um, what I then did, so right, this is where I got a little crazy. This was this whole idea that if you notice with my title, you know, or with my search box, right, it goes in and out. It's this nice, smooth navigation. And so this is another concept that I've covered before, probably like two years ago at this point. It was a flyout menu. And so what's really happening is when I press this icon, it is starting a timer. And that timer is controlling the width of how this is going in and out. So what we can do, let's go over here and let's uh, let's just make another new screen for a moment. So we can just kind of play with this. So we're going to throw a timer on the screen because we're going to need that. And then we're going to throw a text input on the screen because we're going to need that. And so what I wanted to be able to do here was say, all right, your width is going to be dependent on um, this timer's value. And so I looked at this, I got it all designed. I'm like, all right, I want you to be about that size, right? That was the size I needed to fit. So I looked over here and I'm like, all right, what is its current width? Its current width is 200. Oh, dumb luck. Awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, your width, really what I want your width to be is I want it to be 200, yes. But instead of just 200, I want you to be 200 times timer one 
dot value divided by timer one dot duration. And so right now it's a whole bunch of zero, so that's why it's going to do that. And so we're just throwing another variable over here, and we're just going to say, hey, you, you show me the timer value just so we can kind of see what it is at any point, timer one dot value. And so now when I start the timer, right, it's currently zero. When I start the timer, oh, it's going to take a really long time because it's set to take 10 minutes to expand. That's probably dumb. So we go back to my timer, and we're going to tell my timer to run in. These are milliseconds, remember? So we're going to do one for a thousand. So one second to make this thing expand. Nope. So that was how we were able to, um, to, to make that thing expand out, right? So, because we're just saying that your width is tied to um, the percentage that the timer's complete. And so when the timer's full, it's at once. So that's how it gets to be 200. Maybe another handy label to put on the screen right here. So this one would be um, width, just so you can see it. And so then this would be in timer one dot width. One of the great things about power ops, right? We have that ability to see. So we can press this. Oh, not timer one's width, Shane. It is text input one's width. I was like, that's not changing. That doesn't seem right. There we go. Let's try this again. So you can see the number build out, and that's how it's going and growing. So that was how I increased the width. Now, I also then wanted to be able to decrease the width. And I didn't want to have a whole bunch of different timers and such for this. So what I really did was I ended up saying, okay, well, I want my button. And our, well, we want to use a button. We'll use the, uh, the search icon. That's what I used over there. So I said, hey, search icon, what I want you to do is trigger this timer to start. So the way you do that is you say set, um, and we make a variable, say var start timer. But we don't want to use that one. That's what I used earlier. So var start. I'm going to set that to uh, false. And then you have to set it back to true. Var start to true. So the, the variable flipping is kind of what causes the timer to run. And then the other thing I want to do here is I'm going to say uh, set var um, expand to true. Okay, so let's just make sure then, then we're going to go over here to our timer and we're going to say, hey, timer. Doo, 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 doo. So your start is now going to be the variable called var start. And so let's just make sure that this works. By clicking this, it starts my timer. And every time I click it, it starts it, okay? So that was the first part of this equation. So then the other part of this equation then is I want to have different behavior when you click the search button versus when you unclick the search button. And so what we can do here, we're, to make this easier, we're just gonna have a second icon, because that's actually what I did over there. Because I wanted for the canceling, Oh, not adding. I wanted it for the canceling. And so if we take the cancel here, what we're going to do is we're going to say um, when you click the cancel, we want to run the timer again. But what I want to also do is set var expand to false. So I want to de-expand it. So then with this, we're going to click in here again. We're going to click on the text input if I can. There we go. So then now for the width for here, what I needed was an if formula. So if um, var expand is true, do that. And if it's not, what do we want to do? Well, I want it to be 200 minus 200 times all this mess. And so what should happen is that the number that, so it's going to, the width will be at 200 and it's going to slowly increase the timer's percentage, right, which will slowly increase this number. And so it'll slowly get to 200, which will then slowly shrink it back to zero. So if I'm right, that should expand it out. And then that expands it in. Out. In. Ooh. That's pretty fun. Um, and now you notice that there's some weird flashing over here. Um, and that's because I'm guessing that if we go look over here, and so if we click on this thing. Now, and you'll notice that when you're in the preview modes, remember, timers don't trigger when you're in this interface. And so when we switch back and forth, the timer gets confused. So this app behaves poorly 
in its published version, or sorry, in the edited version, but not in the published version. So that's the other hard problem I had when I was kind of working with this was trying to work out all the little extra flashes and stuff. I had to like go publish the app and run it to see what was happening to think about it. But you notice over here, we do not get any of those weird flashes because I finally worked out all the mechanics for that. And so the way that those work, see, and like the timer just shows up all of a sudden because it's confused what it should do. So I, I needed to name all my icons. But if we look at icon search, you can see that I reset my timer back to zero. That's what it did to, I did to avoid the flash. And then I started the timer, stopped it, so toggled the variable to actually cause the timer to start. I set var so shirt so var show search, easy for me to say, to true. And then I also had this other problem that when I first opened the app, right, this is back to the app behaves differently when it's in the studio versus published with these weird, you know, visual visualizations. So what I had to do is I had to go over here on app on start and make sure my timer was reset, which I don't remember why I had to do that. But I had to set this variable called var on start is true. So then that way, if you look at the formula for the width here, you can see that it, uh, it has special behavior if it's the very first time the app has ever opened. So a lot, and all these mechanics are in this app and working, so you know you can grab it from there. But, but just know that if you see like weird flashes, like when you run yours or it starts open, even though it should start closed, you just have to, you have to put that little problem together piece by piece. But when it's all said and done, um, you know, we get all this beautiful behavior. Woo! Um, the other thing about this that was interesting, so you noticed that, right, so I'm changing the width, but I'm actually, when I go, when I, when I expand out, I am, or so right now I'm going to go left to right, and then I go right to left. So I'm actually like going in and out. And that was important to me because I wanted it to look actually nice. And so the way that I had to do that was if we look at our uh, input for our search, down here we have um, not only the width has this formula, which we just talked about, but we also had a more complex formula for the X. And so the X is 1091, which is where I wanted it to be on the screen, plus 160, which is the current width, minus self, which is its, it the controls width. So this is this was the nice tight little formula I ended up coming up with, but so all that you would really have to do, right? This would be the uh, the x of, you know, or sorry, this is going to be your your actual width, like the width you want it to be when it's fully expanded, and then this one is the x, like where, how far to the left or the right do you want, right? So let's just go do this real quick over here. So like right now, um, let's expand this guy out. Roop. Well, see, and I can't expand it by holding down the Alt key like I want. I got to expand it by doing this, but then it's going to freak out when we go back in here. That that's the nuance of working with. It's made it really hard. But so I'm like, be like, hey, you, I want your X um, to be 171. Okay. So then what I ended up doing was saying, all right, your X is going to be 171 plus we said the width of this one is 200, and then it is minus self dot width. So then now when we expand and then when we contract, what? I know that was pretty fun. I, I really enjoyed uh, the math. It wasn't hard math, but I had to like stop and really think about managing that X to do that. So whew, that was fun. Okay. Um, one more important concept, the whole concept that set us out on this path. So in mine, if I do a search, and remember all this weirdness of the icons not showing up, that's because you're in the studio and that's gonna to happen to you, but it doesn't happen to my users when I use my app. So here we're going to search for Shaney. So no records found, please retry your search. So what I did here, this is just a label. And so it's visible property is, oh, if image not found dot visible. Ah, okay, I didn't wanna write the formula more than once. This image, if we look at its visible, is just if gallery one dot all items is empty. So is empty, right? You guys probably use is blank all the time to check whether a field is blank, right? Is blank is for checking an individual field. Is empty checks a table. Gallery one is my table. So galleries have this special property called all items. So 
it all and then the beauty of this, the simplicity of this, is I don't have to worry about that complex if and filtering and sorting formula. All this does is says, hey, if there's nothing in the gallery, then all of these things are true and we show them. If there are things in your gallery, then don't show this stuff. That is all I did to make this all happen. All right, so when we do this and this, um, this image of this young lady going, what? Um, so this comes from a website called Pixabay. Or I don't know how you say it. It's probably not the right way to pronounce it, but whatever. And so this is a site that has royalty-free images. Um, so I signed up for an account with them and I just get things. And so I think for that one, I just search for question. Question. And so then I just kind of scroll through here. Oh, there she is. Um, so I, I have no affiliation with this website. I don't care if you use it. But one of the things I try to remind, at least myself, is that you know you don't want to be using images that have royalties, right? If you go search the internet and search for your favorite Star Wars image and you put that in your app, technically old Disney can show up and shut you down and sue you for millions of dollars for stealing their image and using it, right? They, they don't, but I try to, or not try, I always build all my apps, all my demos, with either images I've created and owned or I go out somewhere like this that has a royalty-free license that is free for commercial use. So. Just be smart with um, your images and stuff, okay? And there's a lot of fun stuff out here. I, I search for weird things all the time. That's how I find my images. So, so that's Pixabay. Um, and then finally, the last little neat thing here is so like if I say try again, what this is going to do is that resets the search. I guess I can just show you the code. That would make more sense, wouldn't it? I forget. I can show you guys things. Um, so I re -put, reset my input search text, that puts it back to its default, which makes it blank. And then I set the focus to search text. So set focus is not a command I have shown, or a fun function, function that I sh I've shown you guys before, but that lets you put a cursor into a specific box, right? So this is a lot of fun. If we go over here and make a button, um, oh, let's get a text input here. So that is text input two, and so, Let's um, wipe out all this. Okay, there's nothing in there. And so then now what I can do is I can be like, hey, when you press this button, I want to set focus on text input two, like that. And so when I press this button, you'll watch my cursor jumped over to there. So that's a great way, like if you have errors, like, hey, this field's required, and you show them a message, and you want to send them somewhere. So remember, you can control the cursor finally. Now there are some weird rules like you can only like with forms and stuff about how that all works, but overall set focus is a nice one if you're trying to help drive where the uh, the cursor is. And then, so in my case, when I was over here, you know, when I say try again, oh, see, and this is where mine is weird. Let's do this again. So when I hit try again, it put the cursor, it cleared out the box, but it put the cursor back up there. And so that was how I was able to get that. Okay, one more topic real quick. Let's go back over to this screen. And so the other thing you saw was I went ahead and put in this cute little sword icon, you know, and I brought it down here and I made it um, white, obviously. But so how did I make it sort? So if we go back over here, what I did, I did two things. So I say set, var sort by so what column do i want to sort by and i set it to the name of the column that i wanted to sort by so this is the name of the column in my data source first name and then i also because i wanted to be able to toggle whether you sorted ascending or descending i also set a variable var sort order to the opposite right so if it's true set it to false if it's false set it to true that's what that formula says so that is all this little button does but you notice if I go over here and click this one, which is tied to department, look at that, it's sorted by department. If I hit it again, it sorts by department the other way. So this is how I built this sorting interface. Um, so then what the formula here looks like, if you look at your gallery, and we say, hey gallery, show me your items property. So I'm doing two things, and you kind of work you know, outside in. So here's my root table, that is that one we imported from Excel. So then I said search all of these. So that's how the search functionality is working. Remember the way the search function works is if you're passing it nothing. So if text, if the uh, input search text dot text is blank, then the search function just doesn't do anything. If it's not blank, 
then that's where we saw it searching by Shane or Shaney, right? And so then finally, if you go here, I'm like, all right, now I want to sort by columns. And so what table do I search? I'm going to sort, or sorry, sort, I'm going to sort the table that was output by search, cool, comma. And then what column do I want to sort by? I'm going to sort by whatever column is in the variable var sort by. So sort by columns, unlike some of the other functions, you can pass it information because in reality, the column name is just a string. So I just looked in employee info table and I'm like, hey, what's my first name column called? It's first space name. And that's how when we clicked on this one, we set this to first name and that worked. If we look at this one, I set it to department, this one to hire date. It's just the column name from your actual data. So then I did that and then I said, hey, if this is one of the first formulas I ever understood, if var sort order, if that variable is true, then sort, sort ascending. If that variable is false, sort descending. And there you go. You have now built a pretty cool little sorting functionality without a lot of work. I also, because I, I got super nerd on this, I don't know why, but I did. Um, I wanted to be able to also click on the name and get the same effect, right? Or hire date, get the same effect. So what I did is I looked, went to the name, right, which is just a label, and I said, hey, on select, um, oh, no, it's right there, the On select, select icon name, so select your icon. So that way I didn't have to write the formula twice. Now, that is, um, that was how I did it. There's interesting thoughts though, you know, you, another thing that I'm just thinking of, you guys wanna see one more weird idea? So right now, if we, um, this is, we're gonna kind of zoom in, see if we can make this easier to see. Okay, so right now this icon is like this, right? And if you look over here, you know, its padding is zero. So it is just size 40 by 20 with no padding. But what I can do is I can add padding to the right of 100. And so now it's moved everything over. Actually, let's, let's undo that. Let's go to a different screen and prove this out. So let's go over to our screen two. So let's add an icon and we use the sort one. So let's just do that. So right now the icon is, um, you know, you have to click with inside that box to do it, right? But remember, you can always take your icon and I can drag it like this. And so then now if I click anywhere in this space, even though it's not lit up, right? And we can kind of see this by hovering. Like look, see how the, the cursor still changed? If I go way over here, it's not. So all of that is triggering that icon, right? All this width. But what I might wanna do, get back to that. What I might wanna do is I might wanna make it so that, hey, I wanna stay over on the left um, of this thing instead of moving it all the way over. So what I might do, if I get this right, is set my padding over here and say, hey, you, I want you some padding of, let's do like 50. And see how that scooted it over? So that was actually not what I want. We'll set the padding there to zero, but we'll set this one to 75. Oh, not 775, that'd be too many. 77. And see how it moved it over? So we could move it over further, be like, all right, maybe like 120. Oh goodness, this is a really big one. I should have paid more attention how big it was. It's like, let's do like 240. So then see, now it's sitting way over here, but all of this is clickable. Okay, so this is a way for you guys to build it so that unlike me where I went to the effort of making this be one thing and this be one thing, I can just grab this, I'm gonna pull him over top a name, okay, so that way you can kind of click any in there and there. And so then I'll just set the padding and let's see, let's try like 125. And so that moved it over there, maybe that moved it too far, so we'll try like just 100. But so now everywhere, and we'll kind of pull this up, but I can start to really massage this thing. I don't like the way that looks, so I'll just add some top padding to kind of push it down a little bit, make it a little smaller. There you go. And so now all of the, everything in between those dots is clickable and will all trigger this icon, even though you're not actually clicking on the icon. So I was wanted, I, I don't typically do that because I'm, I don't know, it, it's just not the way I build things, but I thought that was a neat trick. Uh, Someone, I think Matthew was the one that did that where I was paying attention and saw it, but someone on Twitter had put it out there. And so I thought I would just show you guys how that worked. Um, but yeah, so with that, I don't know, hopefully this is kind of giving you guys some different ideas of how, without a lot of work, I made a more functional app. I made it better for my users. Um, you know, just 
just works. And so here, let me show you also real quick. Let's take, um, let me open up the other one. So here I launched the app in the player, just so you guys can see that the whole experience is much nicer over here, right? So Shane, that works. Shaner, try again. That works, right? I don't get all of that weird, it disappears and stuff. That's one of the hard things about building this type of animation stuff in Studio, is Studio behaves one way, the player behaves the other way, but I did all of the things to make the player work, not Studio work, so cool. Okay, so with that, I remind you guys, if you go out to training.powerapps911.com, you can download this app. If you want us to build this app for you, right? Hit us up at Power Apps 911 we do lots of things. If you have questions, comments, ideas, other things you want to share with people, right? Write that great comment that I might turn into a pinned comment. Leave those down below. I respond to all my comments. Sometimes I get a little behind. I'm currently behind on a group. It happens. Um, but yeah, this was this is just a fun one. Um, I'm gonna do some more stuff coming up on validation, but I just thought I had started out to cover validation, like I said, but once I started to make this nice design, I really, you know, I was really just inspired by when I was like, this. This app has potential, so that's why I did it this way. All right? And so I guess this is all that. I'm gonna say thanks and have a great day. Before you go, be sure to click on the subscribe button over here so that way you'll be notified when new videos come out. If you need any help or you wanna to work together, whether your problem's big or small, check us out at Power Apps 911. We do it all, I rhymed. Or if you're looking for more formal training offerings, we have those linked up here somewhere, so check them out. Thanks and have a great day.